<sighs> okay, everybody, here we are. We are at Purcell Road. That's the uh, road right over there. This is both the Ice Age Trail and uh, Badger State Trail. And we are going to head south. This is part of the Monterose segment. We are going to travel this on the Badger State Trail for a while. Don't know exactly how long. I know very little about this trail other than it's 7.5 miles long. I, yeah, I never really researched the trail. I don't know what the hill difficulties are or the uh, uh, trail difficulty. Now I've done part of this trail before and that was years ago. God, maybe about six, seven years ago. I did the Brooklyn Wildlife Preserve um, segment. And I screwed up and just kept on walking. I crossed the street where the Brooklyn Wildlife Area ended and started walking on the Monterose segment. Yeah, just a screw up. That's all it was. But back then, I went as far as I thought the Monterose segment went. I don't think that the Monterose segment came all the way out here to Purcell Road down there. So yeah, 7.5 miles. Um, here's the trail rating. And here is the hill difficulty rating. Now, being that I'm on the Badger State Trail right now, this is an old trail, or an old train system. So yeah, it's not gonna be too much for our hills and stuff, and it should be a nice wide cut path. But the plan for today is to walk all of the Monterose segment and then we will start coming back, but because I have such a big pack today, we're going to do an overnight. That's right. Monterose has a dispersed camping area, and we're going to spend the night there tonight. And I think tonight it's supposed to be getting down to the low mid 50s in temperature. And that's going to be a real nice temperature to sleep in. So yeah, that's what my pack is for. It's got all my camping stuff. It's got my tent, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, inflatable pillows, everything. All right, let's see if we can enjoy the day. So how you guys been doing this week? Mine has been expensive. It really has been. I've had issues that have been going on with my truck for quite a while now. And I told Jen, I go, I'd really like to get my truck situated. I got a check engine light on. I got uh, uh, tire pressure sensor gauges that are uh, kaput and don't read. So I got a um, tire inflation warning light on. I feel like a rumbly vibrational thing going on with my transmission. So I told her I'd really like to get my truck looked at and figure out what's going on. She's like, yeah, we need to do that. So it finally got in the truck. Or <laughs> I finally got it in the shop. They, uh, they got the tire pressure sensors working okay. Um, they basically had to replace all of them. The check engine light was a faulty thermostat. The big problem was the transmission. I was hopefully I was hoping 
that the rumbly sound that I was getting, I was hoping that was just going to be a worn U-joint, and that wasn't the case. My uh, clutch pack was completely slipping and giving away. I ended up having to get a new slash used transmission. Anyway, by the time it was all said and done, the repairs on my truck have been $2,500. <sighs> Just not what I wanted, you know? That all ended on Friday, so I paid the $2,500 plus. It was a little higher than that, but I'm just rounding off. Paid that on Friday, got my truck back. Friend came over that night, and we were just hanging out watching TV. And I went to bed, woke up the next morning, came down to start working on one of my videos, opened up my laptop, and the hinge to my laptop broke. I was like, oh crap, what the hell? And literally the whole casing around that hinge is just busted apart. The screen wasn't really being held on by too much anymore. <sighs> so I was like, okay, well, I'll go down to Best Buy. It's really the only place we have around here. Go and get a decent computer. We don't have a whole lot of other computer um, shops, but I found something I liked. It was a like a $900 computer or $800 computer, but I had an open box return item, so I was able to pick it up for $450. I spent all that day on Saturday getting all my programs set up and uploaded and, you know, getting everything situated. That wasted my entire day on Saturday. And then on Sunday, I completely forgot. I had hired a guy to come um, grind some stumps in the backyard. I completely forgot about that. So that was $400. So between Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I basically lost about $3,500. So that's what's been going on with my life as of recently. Oh crap, I'm coming up on the bridge up here, guys, and a deer literally just walked across, and I did not get my camera up in time. Damn it. Maybe if I walk up this way real quiet, we'll maybe catch it on the side over here. Oh, there's one right there. I hope you guys can see it. He's looking right at me, or I said, should say she is looking right at me. I hope you guys can see her. Oh, there she goes. Excellent. We got to see a deer. That's awesome. Huh. That's a pretty nice driveway. Go up to that house over there. I actually thought that the horse over here was an actual real horse. But it hasn't moved, so it's a statue. <laughs> oh, look at this old bridge up here. You guys are probably having a hard time seeing it through the tree branches, but just give me a moment. <laughs> God, that looks cool, cool. Got the pylons breaking through the rocks. Wow. That's cool. real cool let's see we stay on the Badger State Trail until we get to County A and then we go past on County A 
I want to say anywhere between a quarter and a half mile. I'm really not sure. And then we'll have to keep an eye open for our uh, trail to go off to the side. Okay, going to a little sign right over here. We are entering Belleville. Excellent. Just a little bit of a wash up there from that field. Those uh, trees up there are looking pretty cool though. I like those. I wonder if that's an actual uh, cow pasture or if someone's doing a little bit of uh, um, landscaping and renovating up there, you know, building something. That answered my question. It is a cow field. There are the trees right up there that uh, we had just passed. Nice. Good, healthy looking cows. I even see a, a calf over there by those two. Just laying down on the ground. I don't know if you guys can hear a mooing or not. There's one that sounds like it's singing. <laughs> Just will keep going and going. All right, let's keep moving. Okay, so this I believe is the only water source that's actually listed for the Ice Age Trail for this segment. Oh, got a couple of duckies down there. So if you need water, this is where you're going to have to get it. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. This is it. This is the only place you're going to get it on this trail section. All right, here I am coming up on Henry Road. And uh, I got to tell you, that house over there, it's dilapidated and looks like it's falling down. It also looks kind of cool. It's like the walls are just falling apart, quite literally. Quite literally just falling apart. Um, I don't know what the name of this little town is, so I'll put it in the video down here if I can find it. But yeah, pretty cool little town. I have no idea what's here. Um, it might just be an unincorporated thing, so there might not be any restaurants or anything for a bathroom break or to uh, stock up on supplies or anything like that either. So I'll let you know what I find out. <laughs> Alright guys, there you go. There's some footage of the uh, wind blowing through the trees. And I think it's just now dying down. It's actually been going for probably a good minute or so. It's nice. And again, because I'm down in this little cut, I'm really not getting much wind at all. I feel a breeze. Well, that's about it. Well, I stopped here to put a little chapstick on my lips and I looked over here right across from me. There's this beautiful barn and look at that barn quilt square on there. That's pretty elaborate. That looks nice. I just hope this camera can pick it up. Yeah, that looks nice. I like that. Looks like it's got a couple of butterflies on each uh, full square along with a uh, some sort of a plant coming up from the middle. Looks nice, it really does. Cool little uh, barn shed over there. And looks like there's a little bit of a trickly stream down here. 
you know, we crossed that other stream back a ways and I was thinking about it. You would probably want to not only just filter water, but you'd probably want to put some sort of iodine tabs in it as well because there are cow pastures in farm fields all over around here and so that can contaminate the water so you got to make sure that that water is completely sanitized for you to use okay i think this road coming up here is county a and you're probably hearing a lot of traffic noise and that's off to my right and that's highway 69 yeah yeah i can read on the uh sign right here County Highway A and then over there is like I said Highway 69 so that means just a little ways down the path and we will be at our junction to where we have to turn off of the Badger State Trail and continue on with our uh, Ice Age Trail so just about there All right, you see where that car is heading down that road going that direction? That means our turnoff path is right in front of us. Because right where County A leaves uh, State Highway 69, so right there is County A where that truck is. But here they have put up a big sign for you to see. So this is where we get off the Badger State Trail. You know what, I've been calling this Monterose, but it's just Monterose. I was putting like an extra E or an A or something in there. Oh well, so there we go. We are now strictly on the Ice Age Trail. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, it uh, didn't happen soon enough because that Highway 69 is so busy. Yeah, it was a, uh, uh, it's just horrible to listen to. It's so much traffic. Um, I think we are going eastbound right now. And then we'll meet up with another road. And I think, we walk along that country road for a little while before we actually get is I think it might be those hills right over there I think that might be it but it could be on the other side of those too <laughs> I really don't know I don't know how far away it is I think we even uh, go through this little uh, tree grove up here we'll kind of duck in there and come back out Wow, <laughs> check out that little bridge. Really narrow too. Wow. <laughs> Holding your elbows so you don't uh, hit the sides. <laughs> oh, there's water down there, but uh, that's pretty stagnant. Lots of moss growing on the surface there. Plus with the fields and the runoff from the fields I uh, cannot emphasize drinking that again unless you filter it big time all right coming up into that tree area little forested area Here we come to a big boardwalk and the end of this little forested area. I kind of wish that they would put a camping area in this little forested area. Another dispersed camping spot. That's nice. This is newly constructed too. Look at the wood. 
it's hardly weathered at all very nice so yeah the hills right over there are where we're headed and then we'll go up there find our dispersed camping area and actually we'll finish the hike finish the trail segment and uh, then we'll go back to the uh, camping area and then we'll set up our camp make dinner all that stuff and it's only getting to be about four o'clock but that hill over there is actually a lot taller than it looks all right so there's the sign and the ASH goes to the right and you can see the path in the grass now I don't think we actually walk on the road I think we stay just off to the side of it see now I see this path here and I wonder if a lot of people climb up through this area just to get up on the roadway for an easier walk but I am going to stay on the uh, right side of the tree line as long as I can kind of see this path cut in the grass, then that's where I'm going to walk. Whew. The wind wants to take my head off. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not seeing anything indicating that the path is going down through that way. So we will jump on. I love these little things. All right, so anyway, <laughs> so we'll jump up on the road over here. And we'll start heading towards those big hills over there. Ooh, <laughs> the wind's actually been blowing pretty good. I had to uh, tighten down my my uh, chin strap here on my hat to keep it from blowing away. <laughs> yes, and they're walking past all these fields. It's just wide open, and that 20 mile an hour wind is still going. <laughs> Made it to the uh, Southern Portions parking lot. It's right over there. But this is the first actual brake stop I've had all day. So I'm gonna sit and enjoy a little, a little break. Oh. All right, well, I don't actually wanna sit here and record too much i don't want to waste too much battery i've only got the one set of um, road microphone receiver and sender so i don't have any backup battery powers or anything like that so i'm going to let you guys go here and then uh, i'll bring you back when we start getting up into that over there oh, okay guys that was a nice long break there i needed that Swig, swig down about uh, about 20 ounces of water and then had a little uh, blueberry fig bar for a little snack and I also was able to look at a map and found that I have covered 4.7 miles so yeah over over half I've got 2.8 miles to get to the end of the trail. What is it? Uh, probably about another mile, pretty much all uphill, <laughs> to get to the dispersed camping site. So yeah, I've probably got close to three and a half miles, maybe a little bit more before I'm done for the day. And it's coming up on, I think about quarter to six, six o'clock, something like that. So I think by the time I get to camp, I'll uh, set up my tent and everything, and then I'll make dinner. All right, let's get up into these trees. I tell you, I'm about ready to lose this hat. I'm getting tired of it hitting my pack. Oh, that feels better already, guys. <laughs> I can move my head. <laughs> the reason I actually brought that hat is because it has a bug net built into it and the last time I was here I was inundated with gnats and um, mosquitoes and other flying insects to the point where 
I could not stop. I literally could not stop. Otherwise, I was just getting swarmed by all these flying bugs. Oh, this is nice up here. Okay, so I have actually waited to get to this area so I can talk to you about that big purchase that Jen and I have been thinking about doing. And I can now tell you it is not a motorcycle. <sighs> yeah, that's right. I wanted a full dress bagger Harley and I'm not going to get it. We are going to get a camper. We found one that we liked. We've uh, talked to the dealer, applied for financing, and we got the financing. Now, we have not signed the papers yet, but I can tell you we are going to get a Forest River Wolf Pup, and it will be it will be a black label edition. Basically, the black label means that it's got the higher end items. Um, some of the things. Wow, look at that! <laughs> look at the rock wall over there. That is so cool. Um, some of the. Uh, things of the uh, of the camper are the higher end things taken out of what model I think it's called the gray wolf series see <laughs> bugs I'm getting them flying around my ears uh, so I didn't want to take my head off Okay, here we are at the top, and we are going to walk around in this bald and get to the other side, and then go back down, and we will end our day by the uh, Brooklyn uh, segment. It's sunny with a few scattered clouds, but for the most part, nice, cool, breezy day just lovely um, regarding the camper once Jen and I learned that we were approved for the loan it's like all right we need to make sure that we're using this thing so we already have a one week long trip planned we're just going to go to a state campground here in Wisconsin and we're just gonna camp in it for about a week. We'll be maybe maybe four and a half hours from home. So if things are going bad, we can just easily pack up and leave. But uh, I really don't see anything happening. This is bringing back memories now. <laughs> yeah, I remember it's been uh, like seven years since I've been here last. So yeah, we're gonna go up, follow the trail up by those trees, and we're gonna go back down kind of over this direction and uh, enter the trees that are over there, if I'm remembering right. <laughs> Okay, so I thought we were going to end up entering the tree line just over here, but that's not the case. The trail keeps going over this direction towards the tree line over here, and then I think it ends up curving into the corner over there. All right, getting back into the trees. And I believe from here, it's pretty much almost all downhill if I remember correctly. <laughs> okay, looks like we are coming down 
to the uh, valley floor again. I'm seeing fields through the trees. So yeah, we went over one nice big uh, hill, came down it. Looks like we're going to go into a small little back at the bottom of the valley floor. Wow, that's quite the view. Uh, I think we're supposed to go across here and then we'll end up going back up into these hills that are over here. I am almost to the top of the second hill. Still have not seen the um, dispersed camping area sign yet, but it's gotta be close. It's gotta be close. All right, getting to the top of this ridge. Oh yeah. I remember this area. This bench right here, I sat and I had a lunch right at this bench right here. A little path down here, let's see where it goes. I do not think this is the uh, way to the camping area. I think some people just come out here to admire the view. Wow. This uh, valley floor was created by glacier runoff. This used to be all a glaciatic lake and river. Wow, amazing, amazing, amazing. <sighs> Love Wisconsin. <laughs> Came up to another bald. And truthfully, guys, I don't, really don't remember this. I thought we just went through those two. I could be mistaken though. Like I said, it's been a number of years since I've been here last all day. I could not ask for a better day. I really couldn't. All right, finally reached the dispersed camping area trail. As you can see, it says to go right, dispersed camping area. We will go down this way when we come back from finishing the actual trail. Okay, we're not too far away from the end. So let's just finish this off and then we'll come back and start setting up camp. Ah, check that out. It's a little roadway that goes up there, but of course we do not go up there. We'll go right and keep going downhill. And in fact, <clears throat> ever since I got to the dispersed camping area path, it's been pretty much all downhill. Now, the bad thing is, is that once we reach the road and turn around and have to go back, it's all uphill. <laughs> I think I'm seeing signs of a house or a garage or some sort of building up ahead. Um, it is past seven o'clock now. I have really been taking my time. And once I get camp set up and start settling in for the night and having dinner, um, I will tell you why I've been taking it so slow today. All right, here we are. We are towards the bottom of the hill. These were the buildings I was seeing through the trees earlier. It's actually kind of weird because when you get down here by the roadway, it actually feels like you're walking along their driveway because it is like right next to it. But it's okay, okay? Don't worry about it, guys. It is okay. So yeah, I mean, here's a way to get into their property. But the trail just kind of hugs this field line right here. So I'll just stay close to here. Do not cross these little uh, garden areas. Stay by the field and you'll be fine. All right, guys, here we are coming up on the very end. And if I was to cross the road, which I've made that mistake before, but, you know, coming this way, <laughs> Across the road is the 
Brooklyn Wildlife Ice Age Trail segment. But right now, as you can see, Frenchtown Road is 2.8 miles, so that was right. Ice Age Trail Montrose segment is done. Excellent. Now we gotta walk back up the hill and get to camp. All right, let's go, guys. <laughs> well, that was pretty cool. I was uh, talking to the homeowner over here. Him and a buddy were sitting in the garage doorway, just drinking and talking, and and uh, we were talking back and forth. They thought I was hunting for morels. <laughs> It's like, no, I'm not out here doing that. So I told them what I was doing and, and everything. Whew, that sun is hitting me right in the face. They're like, oh, really? You're, you're hiking the whole trail? Well, you know, the segment, yeah. So <laughs> they offered me to come in and have dinner with them. They were having beef stroganoff. It's like, really? It's like, I had that like two nights ago. <laughs> So guys, I told you about my channel. If you see this video, hi, thank you so much for your uh, hospitality. Sorry I declined though. You guys even, offer, even offered me a beer. I was like, no, that's all right, I'm fine. I don't drink anymore. And they're like, well, what about a Gatorade? It's like, well, I've got like five more bottles of water in my pack. I go, I'm really actually quite good. I really don't need anything. <laughs> That was nice. That really was. Ah, starting to cool off more. I would say that we're probably in the low 70s now. The wind has died down severely. All right, well, let me get back up this hill and then we'll uh, get camp set up. As you can tell by the sun through the bottom of the trees there, it's about ready to get dark. So I would say that we're timing this almost perfectly, guys. I still have plenty of light to set up camp. Just a couple hundred feet down, I see another sign for the dispersed camping area. It goes off to the left here. Oh, almost missed it. Okay, right hand turn on this small little trail here. And there's our dispersed camping sign. Oh, this is nice. All right, so we can probably set up a tent here if we wanted to. But this whole area over here is all cleared out. Someone's actually built a fire pit up here. And you got kindling up here, some wood. There's a registration box there. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, let's get this pack off and get some bug spray on. All right. With me here at camp, I decided I'm gonna go with the audio from the camera instead of uh, wasting the battery on the wireless mic. That way I have a little bit of battery to get back to the truck. If I'm going to do any talking at all, I just don't know, you know, we've already covered everything. So I don't know what I'm gonna to do tomorrow. <laughs> but here's my gas, here's my pot. Open up my pot, get my lighter. I've also got my Sawyer. I always bring this in case I was running low on water. I did run through some uh, wet areas. I could have filtered water if I needed it, but I've still got 100 ounces of water. I've got five more bottles of these and I already drank one, so I had six. So I had 120 ounces of water makeshift windscreen it was just a piece of aluminum foil but now i can use it for other things i'm always going to carry this what this is it's an old-fashioned military style can opener and here is my stove my msr pocket rocket all right there we go now for dinner tonight, what we have, never tried this one, so we're gonna try it. And it's the Alpine Air, and this is pork jambalaya. Oh, 
Uh oh. Uh oh. There's liquid in here, but it's not coming out. There's no propellant left in it. Uh oh. <laughs> now what do I do, guys? I don't have a backup canister. I could just literally pour water in here and let it sit and soak. What do you guys do when you're when you're out of gas and you have no way to cook your food? I think that's all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour my water right in here and I'll just let it soak up for as long as possible and just let it rehydrate on on the warm-ish water that I had in that bottle. God. You know, the other thing I could have done, I could have went over there and started a fire. All right, guys, as you can see, I got a nice fire going there. So I'm going to pour my dinner back in here. You know, guys, I actually have to admit, I was surprised that the water and all the contents of the bag fit into that cup. That was actually quite surprising. All right, at least I'm going to be able to have dinner. Um, for breakfast, though, I'm not going to worry about cooking off my dehydrated breakfast meal. I've got other things I can eat for breakfast, so I'm not worrying about that. All right, so... Um, while that's cooking, let's start setting up the tent. All right, you can see right there, it's been boiling away. A little stir. Got about another three and a half minutes to go and then dinner should be ready. All right, guys, I'm running out of daylight here pretty quick, but the tent is all up. I opened up the uh, top vent. I staked out both vestibules staked out both ends of the tent this is just the fly so yeah i should have some decent airflow through there i'm going to come in and out through this door here because well there's nothing in the way so i'm saying camp is ready almost i mean i still have to throw my sleeping stuff in there but i'm getting very hungry all right, guys, this is my last battery and my last memory card. So I don't know how much filming I'm going to do tomorrow or for the rest of the night for that matter. But I wanted to share my dinner experience. So there's what dinner looks like. And then I also have a crystal light packet here. So I'll have a little bit of a peach mango tea for dinner. All right, let's see how this goes. I did cook it for like 12 minutes, by the way. Hmm. That's not bad. Got a little spicy kick to it, too. It was definitely a Cajun. <laughs> ah. That's it, guys. That's all I'm going to do for tonight. 
it's getting too dark you're not going to be able to see much you can probably barely see me as it is so i will see you guys in the morning and uh i don't know if i'm even gonna film breaking down anything so yeah i'll just see you guys in the morning most likely on the trail once we get moving all right bye guys That turkey has been going all morning. <laughs> oh. Oh. I heard some owls last night. <laughs> Type stuff. That was really neat. I think probably around 11 or so. Um, a bunch of coyotes started up. That was pretty cool, too. <sighs> so they started yipping and barking and stuff back and forth at each other. It didn't last long. Maybe it lasted like, maybe like five minutes or something like that. And they were done. And that was it. That's all I heard of them. I suppose I need to get up and start moving a little bit here. <sighs> I have no idea what time it actually is. 5.20. Alright, I gotta get moving. Alright, I don't have the wireless microphones set up on the camera yet, so... Just kind of like last night, I just don't want to waste the battery now. I want to use my batteries when I'm out on the trail. So I went through my food bag and pulled out everything I have that I will eat for breakfast. Got some Pop Tarts here. Got some apple cinnamon fig bars. These are uh, Nature's Bakery. It's actually really good. I got their uh, blueberry fig bars as well. And then I got a orange. I actually had one as a snack um, yesterday before we started getting up into the this little hilly area here. And then I've also got a apple. And this is a pink lady apple. It's pink lady apple right there. So this is going to be my breakfast this morning. All right, I got camp all picked up, and we can finish off this trail. I think we did maybe a mile to get down to the road, so I'm going to say that we have about six and a half miles to do today. It is coming up on seven o'clock, and it's almost 50 degrees. Okay, here we are to the Ice Age Trail. If I was to go right, we'd go back down to the road. If we go left, we'd head back to the truck. We're going left. And I want you guys to know, I am not out here to boast. You know, look at me, look what I can do, blah, blah, blah. That is not what my channel is about. I am here to simply encourage you to get out and explore and find new things. That's all I want to do. This adventure was not about me getting products from companies and trying them out to see if I liked them and to give a review on it. Nope. That's not my channel. I am out here strictly to have fun and hope that I can show you how to have fun. All right, there's our ridge over there. Look at that, look at that view. God, it's just beautiful. So let's see, the trail is seven and a half miles long. I started at three o'clock in the afternoon and I got to the roadway 
um, probably about 7.30. So it took me four and a half hours to go seven and a half miles. It's not because I was putting down the camera and walking away. It's because I had hired a guy to come and grind the stumps in my backyard. He goes, do you want me to clean up afterwards? It's like, no, don't worry about it, I'll do it. Sunday, I spent my entire day um, filling in those holes, raking up the dirt and the wood chips and stuff like that from the grinding process. And I tore up my back something fierce. I did not want to come out and do this, but <laughs> I kept looking at the weather going, it's just too beautiful. I have to get out. So the whole reason why it took me four and a half hours to go seven and a half miles is because my back is killing me. It really is. But I wanted to get out here and do this. Are the trail conditions that I've seen during my trip kind of depends on what area of the trail you're on as to how busy that trail is going to be. Flat Badger State Trails portion of the Ice Age Trail here, very busy. This portion, a little busy, but not horrible. And this morning, of course, I haven't seen a single person. It's part of the uh, pleasures of doing this stuff in the middle of the week. <laughs> uh, let's see, for bugs, once I got into this forested area, yeah, there are a lot of bugs here. It's kind of why I put the hat back on. I wasn't sure what they're going to be like this morning, so if they were bugging me too much. I wanted to be able to pull down the, my... Uh, my little mesh screen protector on my hat and keep them off of my head and face and ears and stuff. But uh, so far it really hasn't been too bad. I can see them buzzing around, but they don't seem to be around me. So, so I can, uh, I can accept that. <laughs> Trail conditions. My conditions were great. Considering how much rain we've had, um, the ground was moist but not in any way wet my ground sheet on my tent had a little bit of wetness to it when i uh, took it up off the ground i'll just uh, give it a wipe down when i get home the hills this hilly area are fairly severe so i'm sure that they rated this a three difficulty i'm almost positive because that's like 50 percent of the trails on the ice age trail yeah i would say that that is correct i'm going to say that they're probably going to give the navigation of the trail at least a two and i would say yeah that's pretty pretty much spot on a few rocks and roots and stuff along the trail but it's fairly easy to navigate it's good you know you can see it no problems whatsoever so yeah that is my experience on the montrose ice age trail segment All right, guys, I think I am going to end the video here. I'm only about maybe a half mile from the uh, truck. So I am going to close this out. 
say thank you very much for coming along. I hope you like this little overnight journey. That was great. I had some great weather. I had great experiences, saw some neat things. <sighs> I just love doing this stuff. I really do. And that's all I want to try to do is get to my joy of doing this and have it rub off onto you guys so you can go out and enjoy these things. That's all I really want for my channel. I don't really care about anything else. You know, I don't care about the subscriptions. I don't care about um, getting products from companies. Nothing like that, okay? All I want to do is get out and do things to show you what can be done, what, what you might see when you go out. That's what I want to do with my channel is just encourage you to get outside, go for an adventure, go for a walk, try something new. All right, well, this is Mark saying thanks again for watching. Stay tuned next week. I think we're gonna try to get out on our first rustic road of the year. So I hope you'll join me for that. And until then, you guys be good. And I'll see you down the road. Bye.